so in this part, I'm going to introduce to you Huygens' principle, which is essential to this course. Um, Christian Huygens was a Dutch astronomer, and he was, in fact, a contemporary of Leeuwenhoek. They almost certainly knew each other um, at the time. He was an astronomer, and he was interested in taking nice images of the stars at the time. And so it's not surprising that much of the physics that we use in the microscope comes from astronomy. And that is, in fact, true to this day. So um, he was concerned with the wave theory of optical imaging. He was one of the pioneers of the, the wave theory of light. And his principle is formulated as following, as, as follows. He said that to understand how light propagates, you can consider each point on the wavefront of a light wave to act as an emitter of secondary waves, secondary spherical waves, and to understand the amplitude at any point in space, all you need to do is you need to superpose, you need to add the amplitudes of the individual spherical waves arriving at that point, and that gives you the new wavefront. So, for example, in this original work um, by Huygens, this is his handwriting, um, you, you see in a, a, a picture that he drew of a flame. And so when you see the candle, when your eye forms an image, essentially the eye captures the light waves emanating from each point in this flame, and each point emits these spherical waves, and you have to add up the correct phase and amplitude um, emanating from each point to get the intensity or the amplitude at, at, at the point that, you, that, 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 that you're looking at or that, that, that you're interested in. So um, you see these spherical waves that he drew here, and you can see they go into all space. And anywhere you look, anywhere you, you, you pick a point in space, um, you just have to add the individual amplitudes um, to get the intensity or the amplitude at that point. And we will look at that now um, um, by, I'm just going to draw this up to you and explain a few concepts. So if um, the first concept I would like to introduce is that of the point source, which we've just talked about. And so if I have a very small light source um, emitting light, then um, this will emit what are called spherical waves. So like throwing a pebble in a pond, you get these um, spherical rings traveling out in space. And so if I look at a particular direction, let's go in this forward direction here, then you see that the amplitude of the light um, changes from high to low to high to low to high to low to high. Um, and so the distance between these is, of course, the wavelength of light. So if I were to take a cross section along this arrow here of the light amplitude, it would look something like this. Um, it will go up and down. And this is, of course, the wavelength of light. Now, the characteristic of a spherical wave is it doesn't matter which direction you look at, the variation will always be um, like this. It will always, um, it, in, in all directions, you will, you will have a, uh, an amplitude variation that looks like this. So the other concept that I would um, like to introduce now is that of a plane wave. Um, in this course, these are the only type um, um, types of waves that we need to consider. So a point source emits what is called a spherical wave. And the 
other wave that we are interested in is the so-called plane wave, um, which looks like this. So here, um, the wave propagates in this direction. And again, you get a variation um, that that is exactly the same as you see before, if this is the same color, the same wavelength, except in this case now, it really depends in which direction you go. So the wave is really only propagating in this forward direction here. Um, and the phase of the light, so if I look across this here, the phase or the amplitude in, in this direction here is constant. So if, 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 if the amplitude at, at this point here is high, it's also high at this point, and it's high at this point. Um, whereas here, of course, it depends um, depends very much in, in in which direction you're looking. So it's it's high here, it's high here, but in between it's low. Um, so um, th these two types of waves are really important um, for us to consider. Now, the other thing that we need to to consider is the principle of superposition. And the, the principle of superposition means that if you want to get the um, overall amplitude of two waves, you just have to add them with the correct phase. Uh, and it depends now very much whether the, the, um, the, the waves that you add up are in phase or out of phase with one another. So you could have a wave like this and another one like this. And these two waves are in phase. And so you get um, constructive interference. So the waves add up and you get a larger amplitude as a total. Um, the opposite extreme is that these two waves are out of phase. So they are shifted by half a wavelength in phase. So they are out of phase. And you get destructive interference. And the overall amplitude um, then becomes zero because the, the positive amplitude here adds to a negative amplitude, gives you zero and where the amplitude is zero, so the, the, the sum of the amplitudes here will always be zero. So you, you get no, no, no light coming out when the light waves, individual light waves that you add up are out of phase. Now Huygens' principle now states that take any wave front in a propagating wave and the overall um, the overall new wave front at a later time of, of the propagating wave will just be um, the superposition of the amplitudes of spherical secondary wavelets emitted. So let us just draw this. I mean, so this is a simplified version of the flame picture that we saw early on. But let's take this plane wave here. Um, let's take this plane wave that, that we're looking at here um, and then just and just look at what this might mean. So we have this wave, it's propagating in the forward direction. The um, distance here is shown between two, two peaks in the wave. So um, to work out what, this, what the wave front of this plane wave looks at a later time, let's now imagine that each um, point on the wave front, so this is the current wave front, and each point now on this wave front acts as an emitter of secondary spherical waves. And what you can see that at a later point um, here, at a later point, so all these wave fronts here arrive exactly with the same phase. Um, so what this means is that if you had a plane wave here, you end up with a plane wave later on. Um, so of course the same is true. I could draw something in between. Uh, if I draw, if I drew, um, if I drew this this wave here, 
uh, and this one it gets a bit messy now doing this but you can get the picture so um, you could do the same thing in fact also for the spherical wave so if I take um, a spherical wave front so let's let's draw try and draw this um, like that if I pick a few points along here I could pick this point and it may emit waves like that and then there's another point it may emit a wave like that and another one here may emit a wave like that and you can see that the new wave front um, that we get from adding the the amplitude in, in, in the, with the correct phase um, at a later time will again yield a wave front that that propagates as a circular spherical wave so that is the principle of of, of Huygens and now you can see um, how this leads to the the problem of diffraction and how um, um, how this affects the way we can image objects. So I will switch back to the PowerPoint presentation and go to the next slide. Um, so you see on this slide here um, um, a set of plane waves. So here you have a plane wave which is traveling from left to right. So it's going from here to there. And then here you, is a, you have an aperture. You have a large aperture. Now, of course, according to um, Huygens, I can imagine now, so I can try and find out what, what is the amplitude at this point um, here. Let me just uh, draw this in. What might be the amplitude at this point here? So all I need to do is I, I take this point, let's say, and I draw spherical waves, and I, I look at the amplitude that arrives from this point um, from this secondary emitter at this point. I do the same thing here. I draw the waves, I add up the phases correctly, and I do the same thing for all these points here. And I can see, if you do this correctly, you will see that they arrive exactly in phase at this point. Um, and um, you can see also that the pattern gets slightly messy if you go at these large angles here. So if I if I look at this um, at this direction here, um, you can see there are some sort of messy patterns. But if you look at the far field, so this is called here. This is called the near field. This is called the far field. Um, and so a long way away from this aperture, you can see that the wave front here in this far field mimics pretty much what the wavefront was inside the aperture itself. And that is because the aperture is very large. So we get a we get I'm sorry um, we get a we get a plane wave. So we had a plane wave here then in the far field according to Huygens if the aperture is large we end up with a plane wave. Now consider so if I if I play this 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 um, this this animation here, you can see the plane wave coming from left to right, um, and then adding you know we get these uh, um, these waves here adding up, and you can see how in the far field we get something that mimics a a plane wave. Of course, and at these other angles, maybe the phases don't add up correctly anymore, and this does not then look at, at these extreme angles very much like what we had in the original in, in, in the in the original um, aperture over here. And that the, the, the light arriving in these directions, that is because of this 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 wave nature of light and this the, because of these spherical wavelets which travel into all directions. And, and that is what is called optical diffraction. And that of course um, so so what I'm trying to say is that in these directions here um, you have a, a field distribution which is, has nothing to do with what the field distribution was inside this aperture. But here, um, over the dimensions of the slit, it is it is in fact um, it is in fact similar to what we had over there. So, on the right hand side, we have done something else. So here in this picture, the aperture is very small, and so now. The far field pattern actually looks very different. It has no, um, it has no, um, 
resemblance to the plane wave character it had before the aperture now. Um, in fact, it turns into a spherical wave. And why is that? Is if the, if the aperture is sufficiently small of the, the order of a wavelength of light, then in fact, all that gets through the aperture is a single spherical secondary wave. And of course, in the far field, then what you end up with is just a spherical wave.